Ah, Chainsaw Man. The next victim to fall prey to its own manga readers claiming that their favorite story will soon become your favorite story. That this will be the best anime production of all time. And just wait, this shit is going to be ridiculous. You see this type of stuff all the time, with the most recent example just off the top of my head being My Hero Academia. After three admittedly great seasons of Shonen that wasn't really all that innovative, but had seemingly perfected the formula needed to appeal to mass audiences, all of a sudden, you began to hear faint whispers throughout the community. Listen, don't look now, but season four, <laughs> oh my god. Season four is going to be so good. And you know what? I bought into the hype. Like any other sane fan, I scoured the internet forums for Todoroki X Deku Rule 34 just to quell my anticipation for the new season. And then it rolls around, and you know what? That shit sucked. Hype can be a very, very dangerous thing, setting up a show for impossible to reach expectations before it even gets the chance to show what it's all about. So you can understand my skepticism when people were touting Chainsaw Man as the next modern day masterpiece the second the first trailer dropped. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Luckily, it turns out there's an alternative to this crater of disappointment, where the show we are actually given turns out to be pretty sick. To preface all my opinions going forward, I have in no way read, looked at, or consumed any of the Chainsaw Man manga. If I hear a manga or light novel is getting an anime adaptation, unless the animation A sucks ass, or B gets tossed into season 2 purgatory, I generally just keep up with the show, as it's my preferred way of consuming media in general. I like it when the pictures move. And these pictures move well. In fact, they move really, really well. I was initially a bit put off by some of the early fights and their jarring usage of CGI, but it really only stood out in episode 1 and quickly got ironed out, as far as I could tell. What really surprised me was that when they did use good old-fashioned 2D animation, this stuff is insane. For a show about a guy that turns into chainsaws and completely eviscerates his opponents, I didn't expect for such intricate detail and attention to be put towards the not I'm gonna rip you a new asshole moments. At one point I watched a two minute montage of a guy brushing his teeth, making coffee, and reading a newspaper, and didn't even bat an eye because the character animation is just simply at the top of the industry. Every single frame, every unique shot and angle of the camera oozes with a personality and creativity that is an absolute pleasure to watch. I'm kind of stupid so I'm not going to try and break down every minute detail that makes it interesting, but if you just pay attention to the clips I chose throughout the video, you'll begin to see that the shots don't really flow like a traditional piece of anime. The director Yu Nakayama has even revealed in interviews that the staff's goal wasn't an overly anime-ish feel to the show, but instead something closer to that of a live-action film. And while even the slightest misstep could turn this philosophy into an absolute train wreck, the execution is extremely on point and has left a really unique and generally positive taste in my mouth. Throw in 12 completely different endings with unique singers and visuals, and frankly, I don't think I've ever seen a show that blatantly wants to succeed as badly as this one does. Good shit. On another positive note, one thing I absolutely love about the narrative specifically is how it treats its audience like grown-ass adults. At its core, the story is very much a mystery. Crazy, incomprehensible things are constantly happening around our characters, but the show doesn't go out of its way to clear everything up right away. Like in episode 9, we see Makima gunned down in the streets, only to suddenly appear before her apparent killers moments later. In normal shows, after she appears, a painstakingly long monologue as to how her power works and its deep intricacies would occur. Nope, they're just fucking dead. Or how Snake Girl has her snake appear out of thin air, disappear just as quick, and oh, look, now she's missing a fingernail. Now, if the viewer isn't suffering from some mental illness, they may begin to wonder, oh, what happens if she runs out of fingernails? Can she not summon the snake anymore? Explaining exactly how everything works completely kills both the tension and the fun of a show. You may not know exactly what something does or how it works, but that's the point. You don't know the extent of this person's power, and that makes them feel all the more arousing. I, I mean, dangerous. Things seemingly just happen, but also leave enough breadcrumbs for the viewer to somewhat pick up on and hypothesize what's really going down. The cycle is really fun. The show assumes that the viewer is indeed smarter than a fifth grader, possesses some form of deductive reasoning skills, and rewards them for paying attention. 
like boobs. They reward us with lots of boobs. If I had to knock it for one thing, it'd be that these 12 episodes really, really felt like we were just scratching the surface of what's actually going on. Like, there were little to no big emotional payoffs, just us getting to know the characters that will surely be imperative to the story moving forward. And honestly, I could see how this may have been a big reason as to why some people were so turned off. Most anime try to hit a grand slam with their first season, because frankly, most of them have absolutely no idea whether that season will be their last. It felt like Chainsaw Man knew that they'd be getting a second season no matter what, and focused purely on setting the tone for the shit coming up on the horizon. Which isn't bad? Once a few seasons have come out, I may look back and think, man, that was a brilliant idea. But for now, and at least another year before season 2 could even reasonably be announced, it just seems a bit empty for my liking. And while I really enjoyed it, I could understand how people could reach the end of episode 12 and think that's it. But god, am I so excited for the uncensored Blu-ray to drop. So, at the end of the day, if a cute talking dog came up and asked if I wanted a season 2 of Chainsaw Man, I'd probably say something like, yeah, for sure. Not overly excited like I'd be for a Mashoko Tensei or a limited edition Shamrock Shake from McDonald's, but still excited enough to see what happens next. Because I have a feeling that if it continues to get the same love and attention, and the narrative begins to pick up, we'll be in for something truly special. Dab.